Today's topic is the nature of DNA replication. Having confirmed that the genetic material is DNA, uh, we learned this with Hershey and Chase experiment in the previous videos. Now, we should know how does the genetic material get copied. This was the curiosity among the scientists. How does DNA make more copies of it so that each new cell formed from the existing cell gets the same copy as present in it? So, three models were proposed of which the semi-conservative replication scheme is universally followed mechanism in the DNA of all living organisms. This was experimentally proved by Meselson and Stahl. Let's first understand before the experiment what is DNA replication. We know that the first cell in our life is a single cell called zygote that forms as a result of fusion of sperm from the father and ovum from the mother. But when we are born, this one cell has already made millions of cells. Uh, and the genetic material is equally passed on to every cell. So how does it make its replica? That process by which the cells make more copies of its genetic material for being passed on to the daughter cells is called DNA replication. See, the newly formed cells are called daughter cells and the already existing cell which gives rise to new, daughter, new cells are called the parent cells. You can also find answers to where does replication occur. It occurs in the nucleus. When does it occur? In the S phase of interface of a cell cycle. And uh, this is in eukaryotic cells. Prokaryotic cell, there is no well-defined nucleus. You know, it occurs in the cytoplasm. Now, why is this replication necessary? It is necessary to maintain the genome stability. That is, every cell in the organism should have the same number of chromosomes with the same type of genes coding for that trait, for those traits specific to a species. Let's move to the model proposed by Watson and Crick. They proposed that there is some copying mechanism for the genetic material just after they gave the double helix structure of DNA. You can see this one example of a chromosome that is, you know, DNA is highly compacted into chromosomes. And during replication, which occurs in S phase, the histones and the DNA strands separate off. So that has happened in the S phase, but the duplication of that entire chromosome is seen during mitosis. So that is how it goes. Every chromosome will undergo this kind of division so that each cell gets the same number. This is just one example shown. Why the name semi-conservative for that model proposed? There were two more models proposed, but this is accepted. This is the true one. So just take a stretch of DNA strand here. See the word semi meaning half, conserve meaning to save. So save half, save, save half of what? Of this original material. The two parental strands separate out and each is now going to act as a template. What is a template? The template is a molecular structure that decides the shape of another molecule. What is the other molecule? It's copy. That is the new strand of DNA. How this new strand is formed, how the nucleotides are added up, is decided by the basis on the parental strand. Let us take the example of these two strands of an original DNA, which is each of these strand is going to act as a parental strand. I have given a short stretch of sequence for understanding. So adenine here pairs up with thiamine, guanine has paired up with cytosine. This is the base pair rule. So when they separate out and act as a template, each of this parent strand, that means the one having adenine here, will incorporate thiamine from the cell pool with their hydrogen bonding. And the other strand which has thiamine here will incorporate adenine from the cell pool through hydrogen bonding. Same goes with all the sequences on the strand. So what happens? The resultant daughter DNA, what we call daughter DNA, has one new strand each and one old strand each. And you can see that the new strand is just the copy of that other strand which has separated out from the parental template. Same way, this is the parental template and 
the new strand formed is exact copy of the other strand which had separated out. So, what do you see here? Half of the genetic material con uh, conserved and the other half formed new. Half conserved the old strand and the new strand newly synthesized but still very much the replica of the original one. That is the meaning of the word semi-conservative. See, though I have shown the strands opened up at a stretch, it is not like this. It opens up portion by portion, which we will read in the next video, when we talk about how replication occurs. This is just the model, what is the nature. And several proteins are in, involved to accomplish the whole replication being carried out. Polymerase is there, which will always form the new strand from 5 to 3 direction only. So, in both the original strands, it is from the 3 dash direction that it is started to be red. So that the new strands are formed in 5 to 3. All this has to be taken care of. We will go through it in the next. So the basis of semi-conservative nature of replication is the complementary base pairing rule. Now, how was it proved that the semi-conservative nature is the right one that is happening in organisms? Uh, and the other two uh, conservative and dispersive models are wrong. So they started with E. coli cells as their model organism. And you know, any bacterial cells when cultured should be provided with nutrient medium having ni uh, sources for nitrogen, carbon, oxygen, etc. So, what they did was, before starting the experiment, they wanted all the E. coli cells to have some heavy isotope of nitrogen. That means they wanted to tag nitrogen in the E. coli cells. Where is nitrogen found? It is very important component of DNA. You know, purines and pyrimidines are nitrogenous bases. That means they are rich in nitrogen. That is why the name nitrogenous bases. And normally, because in the nutrient medium, the source of nitrogen is NH4Cl. And normally, for N14, it was NH4Cl with isotope 14 given. So, because they wanted to tag it to be identified later, what they did was they started culturing E. coli for several generations in nutrient medium containing NH4Cl with heavy isotope of nitrogen. And after several generations, they tried to analyze whether they would get cells having N15 in their DNA. So what they did, they extracted and purified DNA and on a centrifugation called cesium chloride density gradient centrifugation, they analyzed that heavy bands were seen. That means the DNA was settled at the bottom. Uh, we will discuss about what is density gradient in a while. So, they analyzed and found that the cells, most of the cells have N15 in them and they picked up such cells to start their experiment with. They prepared a fresh culture medium now again with NH4Cl having light isotope N14. Before going further with the experiment, let me give you a small hint on what does it mean. When centrifugation through density gradient gives you a heavy band means both the DNA strands of the cells are having N15. If it gives, that means the parental strands separate as we read earlier and if new strands are synthesized incorporating this time the newly cultured N14, it will, here it's only a color. We will see through density gradient that it forms both types of bands, intermediate bands and that means one strand is the original old one and one strand is the new one which was formed by the food or the nutrient medium used up, consumed by the E. coli cells. So the old strands separate and the new strands synthesized are lighter. Here it's only a color, the density is lighter. Whereas in the next generation again, you can see that there would be totally light because again in N14 they are cultured, the cells are cultured in the next generation in N14 again. So again their cells will have each strand separated out and some strands will be totally light because they are getting N14 as uh, nitrogen in their food. So light band would be there and some hybrid bands would be there. So we will come back to the screen later. Let me also explain what is centrifugation. Uh, you have to know answers for centrifugal force, why higher density sediments faster molecules having. These things are there in NCRT so just have a look. So what is centrifugation and what is density gradient centrifugation, what is the role of cesium chloride and all, I will just brief it here. It is a process of 
separating out molecules in a solution on the basis of centrifugal force. It is a force which is on a mass uh, when it is rotated. So this is a centrifuge uh, with a rotor here and the RPM is the rotations per minute. Uh, it may vary from uh, experiment to experiment. And how the different molecules shown here, this, this is just an example of different molecules. It's not all DNA, protein, DNA, RNA, whatever. So according to the size, density, etc., how they separate out in various layers. This is gradient. So specially uh, Messelson and Stahl used cesium chloride uh, salts in solution. So what is the role of cesium chloride is, it forms a gradient across the tube from uh, top to bottom. That means the lowest gradient would be up, the intermediate gradient in the between and the heaviest cesium salts, cesium chloride dissociates to settle the heavy cesium salts down. Once it settles, some of it may dissociate or sorry diffuse back into the upper layers. So what happens? They form a gradient. That means the heaviest portion would be the denser and then a still lighter and then lightest. Like that a gradient is formed. So this is the method centrifugation, density gradient centrifugation is the method to separate out molecules such as DNA into bands by spinning them at high speed in the presence of another molecule that is the cesium chloride. As the cesium chloride gradient forms, the DNA comes in equilibrium with the gradient formed. When the density of the DNA equals the density of the surrounding cesium chloride, if DNA of only one density is present, that means when both the strands are having heavy isotope, it will form a single band. If it is a, a replicated one with newly formed N14 strand, then two bands will be seen in the cesium chloride gradient. And if it is totally N14 incorporated DNA, one single band would be seen. That means the density of the DNA would be in equilibrium with the density of the cesium chloride as the grad gradients are formed here. Remember, we are using heavy and light isotopes. We are not using radioactive isotopes as done in Hershey and Chase experiment. This is not going to illuminate or radiate. This is going to be settled as various densities in those layers. So let's come back to our experiment. They collected samples from this N15 incorporated E. coli cells. Samples they collected of the cells and recultured in a fresh medium. Uh, and after this is the zero minute when when it is just cultured this is the start time so i have written zero minute here and we call it generation zero cells all the cells with n15 after 20 minutes time you know e coli multiplies in every 20 minutes so scientists uh, calculated that kind of timing and from the first generation cells they collected the sample extracted dna and purified them Again, they allowed the cells to multiply further, waited for another 20 minutes. That means 40 minutes from the start time, they got the second generation. Again, they collected DNA from the samples and purified them and subjected them to centrifugation. That is density gradient centrifugation. The result seen was this. From the zero uh, generation sample, they found only a single band and they concluded that both the bands are of course N15 because that was the start and and hence both the um, strands of the duplex was having N15 in them whereas in the first generation that is after 20 minutes the sample showed intermediate bands so they concluded that one of the strand must be the original strand and the newly incorporated strand or synthesized strand has the lighter isotope of nitrogen because the food given was NH4Cl with N14. So that was incorporated in the newly formed strands, so hybrid strand. And in the next generation, that is after 40 minutes, they found that 50% hybrid bands and 50% light because this heavy strand would have uh, synthesized the new strand using N14, of course, because now every time it was light isotope given in the nutrient medium. So both the heavy bands have incorporated the light bands and the lighter bands, of course, they are again incorporated the newly synthesized strands with N14. So 50-50% was seen. But no heavy band was seen in the second generation. 
third generation I have shown here. I want you to go with the fourth generation. Thank you.